Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Patriot by Wild Robot Games. This is a 1-6 to six player game that takes roughly 30 minutes per player and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Patriot, you are playing as either the president or somebody close to him. And your objective is to complete a bunch of different briefs and letters and go through five rounds of play. However, among you, one player is attempting to kill the president. Other players are attempting to either save the president or save the president adjacent by doing some other uh, effects in the game that they have to accomplish at the same time. So even the good players can be a little shady. But the assassin is trying to kind of assassinate the president in the best way possible without revealing themselves throughout the game. This plays a little bit like games like Dead of Winter and Battlestar Galactica and games in that genre, but it also plays a little differently. And regardless, though, you'll be choosing your player, you'll be choosing your influence, Influence, and of course you'll be getting a random roll card as to whether you're going to kill the president or not. Setting the board up and beginning the game. It's actually rather quite simple, but there is a little bit of uh, interesting things that you can do in the game. We'll talk about the setup, we'll talk about how to play the game, and of course my review. The setup for the game is actually quite simple. What you'll do is you'll take the board and you'll lay it out in front of all players for the three to six player variant with one side and the one to two on the other. After you've placed the board down, you're then going to place down all the decks. The first thing is you have your beacon cards. So you'll shuffle these up and place it down on the board. Then you're going to have these science cards or innovation cards. You'll be shuffling them up and placing them down over here. These are your letters, and there's going to be a representative of the different types of days on each letter, one, two, three, four, and five. You'll pick one of each of them, place them in order, and then place them down right in the middle. After that, you're going to go ahead and take these cards here. These are the riot cards. Shuffle these guys up and place them right over here next to the war room. Then you're going to have these brief cards. You'll shuffle the brief cards after taking out these cards here, which are the super briefs, and you'll place them down right here. These are the four different influence decks. You're going to have finance, spy, science, and war. Shuffle these guys up, place them down in their appropriate spaces, based on where it says, and then you'll take 10 from each deck, shuffle that to make its own unique deck, and create the public opinion deck, which you will place over here after shuffling. Then you're going to take the die for the game, place them down on the board. You'll take out four beacon cards, place them face up over here. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take the taxes marker, the threat marker, and the civil unrest marker and place them all at zero in each of their respective locations. And then you're all going to go ahead and pick a character. One person will be the president, and there are multiple different presidents to choose from. After you've selected the president, go ahead and place his marker on the number one spot for you to begin the game. And then each other player will select a non-president character and place their spots uh, uh, selectively based on order going clockwise. Two, three, and then four. Each player is going to get a unique card a number of AP, which is action points they'll spend, and an action point marker, you're going to place that marker on the highest blue position, which is typically going to be eight. You're then going to have an ability that you can use on that character, so go ahead and take a used ability action token so that you know when you use it, and you're going to get influence based on turn order. So the president gets no bonus influence, and then each player afterwards gets plus one influence uh, for their order. So the second player gets one influence card, the third player gets two, and the fourth player gets three, and so on and so forth. And each player is going to get a random uh, objective. It could be to kill the president, it could be to save the president. It's going to be detailed in the rulebook based on the number of players. And it's going to be secret, so you're never going to want to reveal that in game. You're going to be wanting to keep that a secret as much as possible because everyone wants to try and save the president, right? And after that, you're pretty much ready to go. Go ahead and place all the troop and rioter tokens or miniatures to the side, all your treasury tokens and science influence tokens, as well as these explosion tokens off to the side, and any extra influence cards or roll cards that you might be using throughout the game to the side as well, because they might come into play. And let's go ahead and talk about how to play the game. The flow of the game is actually simple as well. What you're going to do is you'll choose the first player and you will do all the things that you would do in turn actions and then you go to the second and third and fourth player and do all their turn actions. After you've done that, you'll do round actions and then you'll clean up. So, turn actions. 
what, what's first gonna happen is basically the president character is gonna start and they're going to pick up influence based on their card. And then this card here, the specific president is gonna get two finance, two spy, one science, and one war card. And you'll just simply take them from this deck here. These are cards you're going to use when you place them here in this influence area for various reasons. It might be for the brief, it might be for this card here, it might be for other reasons, and it's gonna be detailed in the game. Um, after you've got all the influence that you need based on your card, the next thing that you're going to do is spend your action points. You're gonna you know, typically start with eight points. And you can go on any of the action spaces on the board. And I'll just go ahead and go quickly over them because there's a great dice tower video that explains this game in good detail. But you have the treasury area. This place has got four spaces that you can place your character. You can go ahead and move these characters along on the board. You can always go to a location as long as there's no rider there. So it doesn't matter how many people are there or military, it's, it's okay. As long as there's no rider on the location, you can go there and spend your AP and or any other things that's going to cost you to go in that location and move on. So I can go ahead and go over here and spend an AP and I can gain an influence uh, for finance. I can go over here and spend four AP, increase the civil unrest by two and get two coins and put them here in the center area. Or I can go to raise the base taxes. It's going to cost me 6 AP and 4 civil unrest, but it's going to give me more taxes, which in the long run is going to give me more coins at the end of every round during the uh, like cleanup phase. So this whole area here is basically moving around, spending AP, spending civil unrest uh, to then gain money, either right now or at the end of the round. Over here is the, uh, this is like the surveillance area. Mainly what you're going to be doing with this area is using beacons. You can always obviously gather the uh, spy influence over here. You can launch a beacon. It's going to cost you gold typically. You'll spend that gold. You'll place um, one of the gold onto the launched area of a card, symbolizing that you can use it. And when you want to use it, there's also a space for that. And you'll move it to the used area. And there's also a cost on each card as to what you have to spend in order to do that specific thing. So you're going to be launching beacons. Sometimes you can choose to also launch from the top of this deck. It's cheaper, but you don't know what you're going to get. And you can obviously replace certain cards too, and so on and so forth. So this whole area is about using unique, interesting actions that change the game up. Over here is like the science area. You're going to be able to to gain science influence, you're going to be able to roll for civil unrest, which can increase or decrease civil unrest, and you can actually spend influence to reduce um, the, your, your roll, making it more likely to uh, reduce civil unrest. You can uh, commence a science project by drawing cards from this deck. Typically, you'll draw two. As long as you don't get a reject, you can choose between the two of them and do one of them. Otherwise, you'll have to subject yourself to the pain of the reject and then do the other card. And uh, the same can be said too for uh, the beacons, I believe, as well. When you choose a beacon, you can pick between two of them. But you're basically going to be uh, using and gaining science markers to do certain things in the game, using these cards to benefit you. And then the final area, basically, is going to be the war room. And there's three plus one spaces you can go. You're going to be able to gain the war influence. You're going to be able to deploy troops and move deployed troops. And then you can roll to execute rioters. Now, you can never place troops on locations that have rioters. But if a rioter ever goes onto a location with a troop, that rioter is removed and so is the troop. The only way to get rid of a rioter when it's already on the space is to roll to execute. You have to spend AP, roll the D8, and then based on what you roll is how many rioters you can execute. And there's always the benefit of spending influence to increase the roll to make it more likely for you to be able to do what it is you want to do. Uh, the last space, technically, which is not really a space, is the middle area. It's the letter. This is like the main demand of the round. So after you have taken your turn and everybody else has as well, this is going to have to be completed. So you're going to want to spend whatever it is that it's required. So this one says one beacon must be launched. So you want to launch a beacon before the end of this round here. But they'll get a little bit more challenging as time goes on. It'll start asking you to pick up brief cards and blah, 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 blah place certain types of influence on these guys here to complete them. And if you don't, at the end of the round, you're going to suffer some type of failed effect or consequence for not completing what it is that is asked of you guys as a collective group. Um, and that's pretty much how the round is going, the turn is going to work. You'll gather your influence, select locations, move around the board as much as you want, spending your AP until you either hit zero or choose to no longer spend any more. 
Afterwards, you're going to draw one of these brief cards here. You're going to read it and complete it. Some of them are going to be like asking you to roll dice or and a certain number of influence is going to be needed or it's going to be a choice and you'll just do whatever it says. If uh, you fail it or don't succeed it, there's going to be negative consequences uh, and then if you do succeed it, you'll get some positive effects and then you'll discard the card and you'll move on to the next player and the next player will do the same thing, gathering their specific influence cards based on their character. They'll go ahead and move on to the board and select their spaces as they go along and uh, it will go until the end of the round. Now before we talk about what happens at the end of the round, I want to mention a few things. The first thing is that civil unrest can happen, and when it does, it can go to its max rate, which is terrible. If civil unrest ever gets to the highest number, which is five, well, you're going to have to draw a riot card. Riot cards will instantly give a threat level, and they're also going to be placed on the side of the board, and you're going to have to roll a four-sided die, based on the number of players you're playing with, to add rioters to specific locations on the card. These guys have to be taken care of because if they're not taken care of at the end of the round, this will happen again. Now the threat level will not increase for this card again, but you will have more rioters. So it's always good to get rid of rioters as quickly as possible so you don't have to incur more rioters and loss of spaces as the game progresses. Then you have the treasury. This is just going to give you a number of uh, points, uh, coins based on the tax level that you have at the end of the round, so adding them to your supply here. Coins are always a supply, which means that everyone can use them, whereas your science markers are specifically for you, and you can choose when you want to use them. The last thing is the threat level. The most important thing in the game, if the threat level ever exceeds five, meaning it hits six, the president has been executed and the game is going to end. If the president ever gets executed in any other way, the game will also end as well. <laughs> so that's basically everything that you see and how it all basically works. There are some uh, object abilities on your cards. There's a specific one-time use ability on certain ones that you can utilize throughout the game. But after you've taken all your turn actions, you're going to move on to the round. So after all players have taken their actions, and this is a really nice board, uh, uh, like demonstrating all the different things that you can do in the game, it'll say that uh, determine whether you have passed the letter demand. So you'll check to see the main action on the board and did you complete that? And if you did, you succeed and you go to the next one. If not, you'll take the failed consequence and you go to the next one. After that, you'll start prepping for the next round. So all players return to the meeting room and rotate clockwise. So basically the first player will go into the last position and the second player will go into the first position. And so that way, everybody is always gonna be constantly changing positions throughout the game so that nobody's ever gonna be first uh, constantly. Then resolve any actions from any active riots. You'll check the riots, you'll resolve them and add new rioters most likely. If there are any active beacons that have been activated, return the coin to the launch, launch position. So if you ever have a coin on a launched beacon and then you use it, this is going to redact it and move it back to the launch position so that you can use it once again on the next round. And then you'll gain taxes if the base tax is above zero. So if it goes to two, you'll gain two and four and then six. This is a way of getting more money into the treasury. And finally, you're going to draw and read the next letter for the next room. So you'll go ahead and pick the next letter up, read it, tell people what it is and how we need to complete it, and then once again move on. And you'll keep going through this until you go through all five rounds of play. After that, then the game is going to end. If the president didn't die, anybody who has to save the president will win. And anybody who is a Save the President sideline adjacent character usually will have some type of requirement, like Save the President and also make sure that three beacons don't get launched or they get shuffled back in or uh, save the president, but make sure that at least two riots occur throughout the game. And so they have kind of like a negative effect that takes place, but if they accomplish that secondary effect and the president lives, they win. And the person who was supposed to assassinate the president will lose. But if the president ever dies before that, <laughs> via any means, then the person who's trying to assassinate will win the game. And that's how you play the game Patriot. But there's a better video. The Dice Tower did a very ex exact instructional video. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to learn more. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention about this game, Patriot, is that there is a one slash two player variant to the game, which adds a little bit of variety and a little bit of a different type of a thing. Uh, it's kind of unique. Uh, and I think it's also co-op, which is something that I haven't seen a lot of these type of games do. Now, if you've played games like BSG and Dead of Winter, et cetera, et cetera, you've, you've probably played something similar to this. You'll understand how this game works. Now, it is definitely different and it functions in a unique way, but I think if you're understanding on those games, you're going to be able to jump into this one without an issue whatsoever. This game is all about 
gathering influence from the four different decks, you have a lot more choice as to what you want to gather and when you gather it. Spending influence anywhere you want, as well as your action points, anywhere you want on the board. There's so many options, which is really great. And there's always usually a cost in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of social aspects going on in the game when you're choosing certain actions. Some actions are more beneficial for the person trying to assassinate the president, but not always and not in every situation. And some actions are usually very beneficial. But if you don't need that action and somebody's using it, that might also be fishy as well. So you have to be very careful about what actions you choose on your turn, because if you're being too selfish, you could be pinned as an assassin, and that could be very bad or poor for your gameplay, because you don't, I don't think you like leave the game when you get assassinated, but you do suffer some negative effects. You lose your cards, etc., etc. Um, Another interesting thing about this game is the beacons. These are like bonus extra actions that you can take and there's a ton of them that change and you can like launch these guys and they have their own unique costs. They're basically like extra spaces on the board. Being able to use them is very, very powerful, but when rioters show up and block certain spaces, that can be very detrimental. <laughs> the science cards here are also super cool as long as you don't get rejects because rejects are nasty, but gain one additional AP per round, that's an excellent card to have. Uh, what other ones are there? Each round to draw two extra war influence cards and increase your maximum hand size by two. They're, they're really good. Reject. Immediately remove one troop from each location on the board. If rioters are currently deployed, add one rioter to each location. Awful. So you're going to have some really good ones and some really bad ones and you have to kind of decide if it's up to you if you want to do that or not. And like you could be a good guy and be like, oh, I want to get the good stuff for us. Or you could be a bad guy and you're like, ooh, this could be a good way to make the game a little bit more challenging when people are already suffering because a lot of these cards are only going to help myself. And if they only help me, I'm not helping the other players and thusly the bad things are just going to affect everyone negatively. <laughs> Choosing when to deploy troops and how to deploy them and when to execute riders is very important as well. Some spaces are not going to be as needed at certain times, and you might want to choose that or not, and it's kind of all up to you. And this game basically has a lot of choice, which is what I love. I love the fact that this game has so much choice in it, but it's very simple. Gain the cards, take all the actions you want, draw the brief and see what happens, and then pass. Go throughout the whole round. Did you complete this? Great or not great, and move on and keep going throughout all five. The gameplay is pretty lengthy, but once you've played this game once or twice, it's going to speed along quite impressively because people are going to know what they want to do when they want to do it. It becomes a little bit more quicker. And everything is pretty much straightforward. Everything is laid out. You know where it all is. All the artwork is excellent in the game. I really like it. It's a big five stars up for me. Um, all the character art really works. Every type of component is used and needed, and it all flows with the game as well. I love the fact that the coins are like a treasury that everyone can kind of use, and then you have your own currency that you can use as well as your own influence. There are minis in the game. These guys are going to be used as either the military units, the troops, and the rioters. So you can choose to use either these standee type tokens here, or you can use these guys here. I'm guessing there's probably going to be a pledge for either or, but uh, honestly, I think it works good for either of them. So it really just depends on whether or not you love miniatures or not. Overall, this game is really, really fun. It's really, really solid. It, it, it's got a unique twist to it other than the, than the other ones. They have their own kind of unique game style as well. Instead of there being like different locations with Dead of Winter where you're moving around and having to deal with lots of units on there, it's kind of all set onto this board here, but there's a bunch of extra locations you can go to and kind of help players. It's a little easier to work together to remove things, but it's also easier to kind of hurt your, uh, your allies as well and destroy the president by accident, right? So that even at the end of the game when the president has been assassinated, you can go, oh, I didn't mean to do that, and people might actually still believe you. <laughs> That's what's really cool about Patriot. Overall, a solid game. It's something I would strongly suggest you picking up. This is a game that I would easily stick in my collection or right next to the other games that I have. It's going to be like Dark Moon for the light versions, and then, you know, BSG and Dead of Winter, and then this one. I actually prefer this game over Dead of Winter because there's uh, less issues with how the trader acts and when and, and bonus actions that they can get. This is kind of all cleaned up, and you don't have to worry about that so much. But yes, take a look at Patriot. It's currently on Kickstarter. Link in the description. 
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review the game Patriot. If you're interested in being in the game, like I said before, go ahead and check down below. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday and Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We will be playing Patriot this Sunday on Twitch and I believe YouTube slash Facebook. It's gonna be like a multi-stream, but Twitch will be definitely there. So you can see us play this game live and that might help you determine, is it different enough for you to wanna pick up why or why not or the quality or whatever you want to look at you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel you're here you went through the whole damn thing there's no reason why you can't push the button and if you want the extra bell notification thing that's up to you but i'd appreciate the subscribe let us know what you think down below in the comments for the game patriot is it something you'd pick up why or why not all right guys that's all i got for you and as always i look forward to not assassinating the president with you next time YouTube, this is a game. It's a game. Don't, don't remove the video.